Hello, happy Friday to everyone. I hope everyone has had a great week. Uh, I know mine has been busy, productive, a lot going on, but well worth it. Uh, I'm going to be trying a f new thing tonight on top of the unboxing of the week, where y'all get to chat with me, hang out, tell me about your week, and choose what games I'm going to unbox. But I'm adding a few new things to my Twitch, such as attempting to do music. So if you could help me test it out, that would be wonderful. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to press play. Just a moment on the music. See if it triggers it. And for everyone out there today, how are you? How was your week? What have you been doing lately? What have you been playing? Let's see if I can get this to work. Well, I know I can hear it. I don't know if chat can. So, if anything, it's some nice, calming music I get to listen to. Hello and welcome. How was your week? Oh, no. Why is it? There we go. Hello, I am Jaybird. I run Play Game Spread Joy at because it's quite direct in that I like to play games and spread joy. Uh, my favorite hobby is board games, tabletop games, RPGs. I stream a couple times a week. Monday, I teach games. I then play the games, either ones you can play at home along with me or or talk to me in chat about what moves to make as I play, along, play the game for you. Um, Fridays, which is obviously now, this is Unboxing the Week, where I get to hang out, talk with chat, talk about our weeks, how we're doing, and then chat gets to help me pick out a couple games that I will be unboxing. They are new to me games, so new and shrink I've picked up. They may not be new this year, but they're something I have recently acquired and that I need to open up, so I figured I would open them on stream, let you experience it with me at the same time, and then if you have questions about the components, the quality, the art or number of pieces you can ask immediately as opposed to waiting and posting be it on Instagram or YouTube wherever I post it later so yeah if you're in chat uh, say hello let me know how you're doing uh, so my week has been pretty good uh, pretty long pretty busy I started off last weekend by traveling to one of my friends in West Virginia, Chris, the charity board gamer, I was helping him co-host a large and long charity stream for the House of Afro Afro's Capes and Curls, where we did about 28 hours of streaming in two days. Um, I would have to ask him how much money was raised for the house, but I do know a significant amount, and it was well worth the effort. Chris did an amazing job setting it all up. Uh, and it was a privilege just to chat with him and co-host alongside him as we played 14 different games. And so that was over the weekend, and the, that was actually Friday and Saturday. Sunday, hung out with him and his family, played some games. Finally learned Scythe, which we had talked about for like two years, learning how to play. Uh, really enjoyed it. Do need to play again that, now that we better understand the game. It won't take us three hours. Hello, Tail Wagon Games. How are you today? How was your week? So, I'm, uh, yeah, I just started my stream. Uh, this is going to be unboxing the week where I get to hang out with you and chat, talk about our week, see how we're doing, see what we've been playing, and then you get to help me pick out some of the games I will be unboxing. 
And it's James. Hello, friend. Hello, friend, indeed. Uh, you're in pretty much every Twitch stream that I, I've watched lately and always around. And Tailwagon Games is doing good. Celebrated your birthday yesterday and got your first vaccine. Well, congratulations. That sounds like a great birthday present on your way to getting to play more games with more people as things get safer to go visit as you have vaccines. Driving, so lurk and listen. Well, thank you for lurking and being here, James. If you'd like to drop that exclamation lurk, we can have a little fun with it. Uh, so, yeah, the, the definitely plan is to make it safe and definitely get, go visit more people as we can. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I love the lurk set thing I set up because even though life is busy, I still really appreciate when people come hang out in here and listen. And so, yes, you are awesome from being here. Uh, so, yeah, my week, uh, I was, as I was saying, last weekend I did the big charity stream with the charity board gamer. Uh, we did about a little over 28 hours of streaming, played over 14 games, raising money for the House of Af Afros, Capes, and Curls. Uh, hang, hung out with him Sunday, just playing games with his family. Finally got to learn Scythe, which we've been talking for like a year and a half to learn it together since we both never learned it. And then Monday was driving back home, about a six hour drive, immediately unload. Like he sent a table with me, so I had to unload that by myself. And then Monday night, I taught the Princess Bride adventure card, uh, board game here on Twitch. So yeah, I've had gaming plans for almost a week and a half, two weeks straight every day, every night. <laughs> oh yeah, Scythe was definitely fun. It was probably not the best to learn after almost three days going and it was like the 16th game we played that weekend. Almost the eight or close or eight or more games, new games we tried. <laughs> yeah, so it was definitely a good week, just extremely busy. Like Tuesday night, uh, Chris streamed again. Uh, we played Overwatch. Wednesday night, I had game night with some friends where he learned <laughs> some new games. Last night, I had a play test that I helped with. So, yeah. A lot of gaming this week, like tonight, it's a little more relaxed. So, so what new games have y'all learned or played recently? Or or if you haven't learned anything new, what have you been playing? And then also tell me if you can hear the music or not. I've been trying to set up so y'all can hear music. <laughs> yeah, good problem to have, yeah. Uh, during quarantine, I went from like almost no gaming to the past few weeks have been like nonstop gaming, I think. This coming Sunday may be the first day I don't have something specific planned. So you can't hear the music. Okay. So I need to figure out how to get the music to play into Twitch. Because it, it's hooked up and it's trying to tell y'all <laughs> what's playing. <laughs> so I'm going to try to turn it up and tell me if that affects anything. I think it's not going through. If I can't get music to work today, it's not a big deal. Um, but that's part of the, being a new streamer, learning all the ropes and all the programs and how to get them to work together. And you played Unicorn Fever, Lines of Lydia, and Canvas. It's actually three games I've never played and don't know much about. There's so many games on the market nowadays. Like, I know I've heard about Canvas. I believe that was the one that had, like, the really nice box art. That was meant to be where you could basically hang the box on the wall, like a canvas. So, what music program, or what have you been using for music? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw a lot of people actually posting that they hang the box on the wall now, because <laughs> it was so nice looking. Yeah, so like, uh, I think it was Amanda Panda had links, because she was using Pretzel Rocks. So, and then what do you use for your streaming into Twitch? Because I'm using Streamlabs OBS. Do you have to link it into OBS, the Streamlabs stuff, or should it auto link into the Twitch? Because the Pretzel Rocks is auto linking to say what song is playing right now, but it, if it's not showing up or so y'all can hear it, that's what I have to figure out the next step.
Yeah, so I'm going to be here dancing and enjoying the music, and I'll be like, what is he listening to? What is he here? He has voices in his head. It'll be a studio, but I had to play on another computer in the background. Okay. Yeah, see, I'm playing it on the same computer, but I'm not playing it through speakers. I'm wondering if I need to play it through speakers so then my microphone picks it up, or if I need to link it into the mixer of Streamlabs OBS. I've heard and seen different things, but I just downloaded uh, Pretzel today. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, it's all, it's almost a little bit nicer to at least have a little bit of music, because otherwise it's like sitting here in silence, just reading off and talking to myself. So it's like, okay, it feels a little bit better at least hearing something back, even if it's not actual voices. <laughs> yeah, so tell me about the other two games. Uh... Unicorn Fever and Lions of Lydia. Like, what kind of games are those? Um, be interested to know more, more about them. Maybe try them out at some point. I'm always open to trying new new games, learning about everything I can. And while we're yeah, talking, I'll go ahead and put up and switch this so you can potentially see. That's a little close. Unicorn Fever has chubby racing unicorns, which automatically makes it amazing. Well, yeah, for, definitely a betting game where you bet on the winner of the race. Okay. So you're betting on the winner. Do you have agency in affecting how fast they run? Or I guess how fast they roll down the track? Because if they're chubby, they're not going to run very fast. Do they run into each other? Do they stab each other with their their unicorn horns? Or kind of so, sounds not not necessarily like party game, but like semi family friendly, kind of more filler, relaxed style game. Cards for the speed and you get magic cards to help her hurt the different racing unicorns. Okay, definitely could be fun. I could imagine the artwork for that being really fun to look at too especially since they're chubby unicorns uh, it's going to really kind of throw them off i should probably turn the game so y'all can see all the options for tonight i also set up a different webcam so i'm testing out how it looks tonight as well yeah uh being with uh chris the charity board gamer over the weekend he was getting new camera stuff set up, so he sent some now unused webcams he wasn't using anymore with me, which is great, but it also means changing my setup and testing equipment. It's like, oh yeah, I don't have enough equipment to test as a new streamer to begin with. Okay. You should be able to see all the games I have this week to choose from now. Yeah, so these are the games, and uh, whenever we're ready, we'll start opening however much we have time for, and whoever's in chat gets to help me select what we open first. I don't know, I know James may have been here before when I did this, I can't remember if uh, you, Tailwagon Games, were here last time I did the unboxing work. But yeah, each, t each Friday, hanging out with chat, um, basically give them a selection of maybe five or six games I haven't opened yet and however much time we have to start to open them, look at the components, look at artwork for the fun of it. Uh, Lions of Lydia is a recently released Kickstarter, okay. Uh, Bagman engine, engine building, getting and sending out merchants to get different land holdings and get gold or get better stuff too. Okay, yeah, that, that definitely sounds really interesting. Uh, a lot of mechanics that I've enjoyed before. So I'll definitely have to look up that one and see more about it because that would be fun to try. D do you know if it has a solo mode? Because I do have a game group that plays, we typically play four players, but I'm always looking for additional options that have solo modes that I can play here on Twitch to show off. No solo mode, two to four players. Okay, well, I'll definitely still be checking it out for my uh, in-person game group that we do and I'm and knowing BGG there's constantly people coming up with solo modes for different games so 
I bet I could find a way. Uh, the beat just dropped. <laughs> um, so yeah. Any thoughts on what you want to see opened? I might as well turn off. Well, I can't turn off the bot thing. I'm telling you what's playing. Uh, can I? I'm going to attempt to add. Can I add a source right now? Will it let me? Media source, maybe? website no I'll just figure that out later oh eight expansions whoa that's a lot to play paladins heard good things about that one yeah so that's definitely been one I've been wanting to open recently um and yeah if we open it tonight that means I might get to do something I had planned but only if we open it kind of a little su surprise extra um but yeah and then a couple of people on instagram talked about the shared dream which i think that has a lot of miniatures in it um but yeah if if you're the only one here talking tail wagon we'll probably start with paladin since that's what you selected um but i'm fine with whichever one you want to see because I'll open all of them eventually, of course, but it's more fun opening here where y'all can see what we got going on and show it off. So have you played or do you know much about Paladins? So yeah, we'll start with Paladins and then depending on how much time we have, we might move on to Shared Dreams. I'll go ahead and show you the bot of the Shared Dream. Yeah, just... You can already see all the miniatures it talks about in there. But yeah, I, I know nothing about the game. It Chris gave it, sent it with me uh, when I was there this weekend. That's kind of something a publisher sent him. And he occasionally has extra things he doesn't have time to review or can't review with his family. Why did I put Paladins over there? Uh, so he'll send stuff to me where I can help review, show him off while he's doing his thing. Okay, yeah, so I, I do know that Paladins of the West Kingdom is kind of in the series of the same, like the shipwrights and stuff like that, but I still need to kind of play most of those, so I haven't played it, but I do know it, like the artwork. I believe it is, who's the art by? Does it say on the box? So it's from Renegade Games, Garfield Games, one to four players, ages 12 up, 90 to 120 minutes. Yeah, I know the same artist did a lot of the same, this whole line, and supposedly well-known artist. I'm bad with names, so even if I found it, I'd be like, oh. Okay, that's who it is. Yeah, just... Yeah, these... The way they did the palings on this, like the horse artwork and all the knights looks really cool just straight up. So yeah, we'll, we'll get into it and see what's in the box. So I'm gonna switch the view. Hopefully I did this right, there we go. So now you can see a little bit better as I open it and we can experience this together. So pretty smooth, pretty tight fit box. I do like how they, the boxes they make are High, qual high enough quality to last. They're not going to fall apart. Um, it's a decently thick rule book. Let's see if it has page numbers. Let's we'll see how many pages. Whoa. 36 total pages. Hopefully it's not just reading it. Okay. So we got some good, good big diagrams. Good setup. Talks about the components. Yeah. It is a lot of pages. I'm not sure I've seen one with this many pages yet. 
So there are several pages just on setup, so it looks like it goes into plenty of detail, at least. So it has a quick overview. Uh, talks about rounds. The structure of the rounds. Ooh, this definitely seems like one you want to watch a video or read the rule book before you ever sit down at the table with the game. Yeah, images do take up a decent amount of the pages, fortunately. It's not just text, but... This would be a slightly deeper game to play. I'll look up real quick on, on BGG what they consider the... How hard the game is. Like, is it a lightweight? Is it heavy? So, Paladins of the West Kingdom is considered a 3.67 out of 5 weight complexity. So, yeah, it's, it's not going to be your fast filler, easy to learn game. Okay, well, at least some of these, we're going to do some pages like scoring. It's taken up most of the page for that. Okay, and it has solo play rules. So that that's starting at page 26. So the main rules, if you're not playing solo, looks like it's, what, two-thirds of the book? It's not as bad as it seems. Okay, so then it talks about how there's AI actions for the solo. So it's going into those rules. So that's why there's so many pages on that. Uh, let's see. Scoring for solo. Well, a full page on... Uh, well, no, that's some scoring stuff, Townsfolk scoring, and then we do have reference on the back, which is nice, especially with how much was reading in there. Yeah, definitely seems like a bit to get into. I would definitely be looking up some how-to play videos just to verify things or play with someone who knows it before I dived into this one alone. So let's see what what is over here in the box now. Well, of course, we got advertisement for Raiders and other Lanterns app, Lotus app. So one, two, that's a thick deck of cards. A lot of wooden stuff. So let's see what all is in the wood pack. Oh, we don't need the silica gel. <laughs> okay, so I see black pieces. Oh, let's turn on this other view so I can zoom these for you. Okay, so we have, looks like, not meeples, but more like silhouettes of heads, potentially. And now these are more meeple-like in that they're full standing people. So there's bags of black, let's uh, see. So the standing meeple, oh, I'm not in frame, am I? And that's upside down. Okay, well I can fix that real quick. Maybe, maybe not. Transform. Ah, it didn't flip. Try this again. Okay, a little bit better. <laughs> there we go. Got it flipped for you. It probably wouldn't have... Or I probably could have acted like it was a card and actually put it down. I pushed it upside down towards the camera thinking I hadn't flipped the camera. So, Yep, there it goes. So we also got the red ones. I, need, I can put them down there. There's a whole bag of those. So it looks like black and red for player colors. Um, red. There are also red house type things. A whole bag of those. And then we got the green st 
standing style meeple. Bag of those again. And the blue is more of a more like a teal. So it does stand out. Definitely looks different than the green. Which is nice if there's colorblind issues. And we have white as well. Oh, and we also have purple. We'll see how well this shows up on my purple mat. Yeah, you can see that. I guess my mat does look kind of blue with this lighting. Yeah, this is actually a purple mat. It's I'm surprised how blue it looks on screen. And then, let's see what else we got. We have this whole bag of even larger house type things. And then this whole bag here. These each have numbers on them. It looks like zero through like five, seven. Almost like pots of some sort, like a, a vessel to hold food or water in. Yeah, that the blue and purple in the game really do stand out in this one. Definitely looks nice. Yeah, so all these pieces I've pulled out of the Ziploc so far have been wood. Um, and these right here, custom shaped and screen, looks like they're screen printed with white on them, the blue. And then last but not least, some more wood pieces. These look like flag things almost, like banners. Put those on screen for you. So yeah, that's all the wooden parts you, um, on screen. Of course, all the bags of them I pulled out. But I'll leave those. Um, let's see. We got some. Looks like these are player boards. So a single fold. Looks like places to put cards along the bottom. Uh, smaller cards along the top. Looks like a lot of really good iconography. It shows in some of these spaces like three and four. So probably depending on how many players you have. If some of those spots can or cannot be used. So that was one. Well maybe these aren't player boards. Maybe these are part of the main board. Because I only see so many of them. Looks like card slots along it. Cards can go along the top. So yeah, some of the icons are a bit small, but the shapes are all definitely unique, easy to read, even against that background. Okay, maybe these are player boards? Uh, spots for cards along the bottom, looks like a banner score track along the side, cards along the top. Um, a lot of, looks like action spaces of some sort, where you can place different workers. Kind of wonder if, in this game, players aren't particular colors, but each different color can do specific things in the game, and you recruit them and have them on your board in some way. Again, I have not played, so I, that's just a guess based on what I've seen so far. But that's the fun part of opening new games, is kind of guessing what the components do together. Um, so yeah, we got four of that, of what I just showed you. So that's definitely a player board. It does look like they're double-sided. So there might be a difference based on player count, or maybe there's different types of rules, different game, game modes you can play. Yeah, because it's definitely different stuff on this side. Okay, uh, let's see how well the cardboard components punch. Yeah, it definitely does seem like a lot going on, but it seems pretty easy to see everything and what you'll be choosing from at, at minimum. Okay, so we got two punch boards. We have one big scroll. Okay, that, that punched really nicely was smooth, it wasn't falling out, but it definitely didn't catch and tear like some punch boards do. Um, not too many tabs, not too thick a tab on it. 
and we'll see how well you can see the thickness of that cardboard. Probably a good 16th inch cardboard. Let's see how well these punch. Yeah, so you can hear that snap. It, it comes out pretty easily. I'm going to do it right next to the microphone to see if you can. So that, that's snapping out really clean without issue. Um, so, yeah, we have, it looks like cloth bag type tokens or something. They look, yeah, like satchels or something that would hold. And then these look like coins. I don't see numbers on them. Just a general coin. See, that one, that one almost fell out by itself. Just the lightest amount of pressure. Yeah, it really was a really nice snap. Seems these coins aren't snapping quite the same. But then again, a circle is more likely to fall out than the special shapes that those, those edges kind of hold themselves in a little bit better. Yeah, but I can snap those really fast without issue, not worrying about it tearing because I, I could already tell how well they were cut. Kind of a good test is how fast, if you can punch these fast and not have hangers, well that barely hung right there. You hang too much, your tab's been too big, you like to leave a tear. If it takes too much pressure, then you didn't get a good enough cut. But yeah, th these are really good quality punch boards at, at minimum. So I do like that about that. And to the trash pile on the floor. And then we'll get to the cards next. Uh, do you want me to open the larger cards or the small cards? Oh yeah, one of the best things is getting this punch board. It's like a game in itself. Apparently the song I'm hearing now is Banana Bonanza. Large cards, okay. And there goes the punch board. So I did notice that it did not come with any extra Ziplocs for all the punched components. So I may have to incorporate this bag that all the other Ziploc components were stuffed into and just repurpose it for all the punched stuff. That's going to be the first thing I notice for storing it. And there's not Ziplocs or any solution for all these cards. But yeah, let's see what kind of cards we got. So since you picked the large cards, I'm going to pick the ones that look like the box first. Let's see if these have any kind of quick tab on them. So they do. They don't have the line that you can easily see, but on the edge they will have that extra little tab if you can if I can catch it. Yep, there we go. It's always nice when they add that so you don't have to pull a knife against the cards and risk cutting the cards themselves. Extra bags on hand. Yeah, so well, as a hobby gamer, almost all of us who have a lot of games at this point also have a lot of bags. I do have some somewhere. I feel like I ran out of the main size I was using and probably need to order more. But I agree, it is nice when games come with everything they need. And being friends with a few publishers that have said it's really not... practically costs nothing to include bags. So... It's, they kind of question why some companies won't include them. But that's a choice that they each make. And sometimes it's nice, sometimes not. So first I'm seeing different colors. So I'm going to do some quick stacks here. So the backs might be different. That's what's going on here. Okay. So this might be... I'm going to open this other one, see if any of those backs match. Yep, quick tab. Now, this is probably worse because I just cut my fingernails like the other day, so I have no nail to catch these. So this is showing, okay, you can still get that tab and open it without a knife. 
Oh yeah, the artwork. I'll, I'll I'll try to go over the cards too, but I'm trying to divide by the types of backs first to kind of make it easy. So that's browns. Those are reds. That was green. So I'm gonna clear this, and hopefully I can show a little bit more detail of the cards. See, now that looks purple, even though the other view still looks blue. I don't know what's going on. I need to adjust some settings. So yeah, first, now we're upside down again. We'll see if it focuses. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did it just... Now it looks blue. Am I going crazy here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, wait, it was purple. And I looked back and it's blue again. I, I guess I have some settings on where it's adjusting by itself that I may need to turn off. Because I was like, that was definitely blue or purple a while ago. Okay, let's see if I can get it to focus on the art. And of course, on the other way now. Okay, it's trying to autofocus. It's like it wants to, and then it doesn't. So I don't know. There we go. So yeah, this car these cards right here I'm currently holding look like the back of, or actually the face of the box itself without it saying Paladins. And most of these show a brown border. Hopefully it's showing up as brown with all this magic color changing going on. Uh, some symbols in the corners, different numbers, and it looks like kind of actually talking and telling you at the bottom any special effects. Because like the one showing you right now, training gains two additional silver. We got recruiting costs no silver. Uh, we got some more fewer than. Swing and a flail. So I'll just l lay some of these out here. Show off the art. We got a crossbow guy, shield guy. His shield, like first glance, I was like, wait, is he holding a cello there? <laughs> Just at a quick glance, it almost looked like a, a big instrument. <laughs> Trying to tell if there's any duplicates in this. Because I'm seeing some of the same names. Yep. Yeah, we're definitely getting some duplicates, but it's okay. A lot of games have duplicate art. I was just trying to see how many different ones there were. Oh, but do we have? We do have some that have a different background. See, that's a darker background versus more the daytime background of that one. And so it looks like there's a set of lighter background and dark background. Let's see if I can get these to focus at all. Yeah, I'm really liking the card design at first glance. For supposedly how heavy the game is, the artwork is extremely nice, and all the iconography and details make it seem like it would be easier to learn than first assumed. Yeah, I'm not liking how this won't autofocus for me, but it is what it is. So let's we'll see what the next stack is. Or would you prefer I go back to this view bigger? It just won't be zoomed in on the cards. Let me know what you would prefer to see. So the the cards are a little thin. They do feel like they would bend easily if you're not careful when you shuffle. So I would be mindful of that. Yeah, just because based on how they were, some of these cards were in different packs and set in the pack, we're already getting a slight variance in their bend and how they stack up. So I'm sure this might get more obvious as I shuffle and they sit together. 
yeah, so I'll go I'll go back to the larger view just so we don't have to play with the the focus too much. Um, maybe holding it up to the camera a little bit will help you see it better. But yeah, so we'll be mindful of some of these cards might have might not be the thickest and can easily bend when we play with them. So next up we have cards with a green back. Oh, this seems to want to autofocus for me. Maybe I'll just do that for you. So these look like like monks and other villagers of some kind, not quite like the paladins and fighters. So we got the abbot, acolytes, architect, debt collector, a defender, a gatekeeper, missionary, peddler, holding his pelt, a squire. Yeah, uh, so, and then it looks like a lot of these have symbols in the up opposite corners. And so even if somehow these got mixed at the face, they'd be easy to tell apart because of the corner that the icons are in. So that that is nice to see straight up. And then we have this back. Let's see if I can, how that focuses. And these, instead of a brown border, top, bottom, or wherever, it's a gray border. And the backgrounds on these look, do look like three different styles. So I have like a green background and a green symbol in the upper corner. We have a blue, almost snow background with the blue symbol in the corner. And even not just the color, but the symbol up there is going to be different. We also have a yellow with a different symbol in the corner as well. So adventurer, archer, barbarian, champion, hunter, invader, marauder, mercenary, mercenary, protector, vigilante, and warrior for that set. So let's see if we go through the same naming structure. Adventurer, armor, assa oh, assassin, that looks interesting. Kind of the mohawk tribal tattoo stuff going on there a barbarian of course he needs the helmet but doesn't need much clothes a guardian a lookout another marauder mercenary protector a thief a traitor vigilante and then okay so now we got an archer armor assassin Champion, Guardian, Hunter, Invader, Lookout, Mercenary, Thief, Traitor, and Warrior. So it looks like three, almost like decks of types of characters that either go with like clans or something like that. Helmets are all you need. <laughs> yeah. yeah, protect the face. Don't care about the body. So now let's see about opening the small pack. See how well this opens. Ooh, this may not have a quick open on the small pack. That's a little unfortunate. Let's see if I can find the edge to catch without catching the cards. There's a little bit to catch down here, at least. That's not the thinnest of plastic either. That's a thicker plastic wrap. See how many different backs of cards we have. We have it looks like a our, our medieval style crane. On that back, we have a set of houses. Oh, yep, they even had two-story houses back in the day. of definitely doesn't look very happy whoever he is 
Are we reading something over his shoulder? Or what's going on here? Uh, looks like a workshop or like working at a desk. We're we making plans. <laughs> yeah, he's not having a good day. That's for sure. Okay, so got a couple of different. Looks like almost like sealed scrolls. We got some red ones. We got some green ones as well. Oh, there we go. And then these all look to be identical. A little banner on it, flag of broken seal scrolls, whatever that is. On the back, it looks like that same thing is not broken. And then there's more banner flags shown on it. So I wonder if it's like some special go card indication, depending on which side you complete or when you complete it during the game. There's 20, 24 of those. So these green scroll style one, one, two, three, four, five, six, ten of these. So I'm seeing a lot of different color maybe it requires different workers or you earn them for completing different tasks on the board wonder if these are some of the goals during the game or bonus cards of some sort those were definitely all different uh, we got red ones now six of these uh, like all same shape layout but of different potentially resources of some sort in the game because at least these two look like some of the wooden pieces the white well the black that could be the half the silhouette heads but I'm unsure about these other three what they would represent in the game yet without knowing the rules Okay, these houses, it looks like in the bottom corner, it looks like it shows four, almost like the white meeples, but it's hard to know what they're for straight off without, and then on the face, okay, so all of these have four on them, but of various colors different combinations of those colors so probably the front just means okay these these represent four workers of some sort yeah definitely interested to figure out how to play this so what I'll probably end up doing once I have time to really learn the game and dig into it and probably learn the solo play I will do a stream playing the solo game and then People can kind of tell me what moves I should make as I play, and we can kind of play it together as a, a, one, a one versus the AI, where the one is me plus chat, playing as one person in the game. Um, and so, even if you don't know how to play, uh, you'd be more than welcome to join me, and I'll, I'll probably kind of do a teach and play. And that, that's what typically what I do on Monday nights, is kind of a teach and play style stream. So kind of what my plan is Friday is open some games and once I've learned them I'll introduce them on Monday streams as well so yeah th so these cards definitely all have four different I guess meeple resources of, in some combination be interesting to and it does look like if you look in on it I guess that's a, a pub or something a tavern because there's like little tables in the background and a little chandelier so probably the artwork on the front of that was the local tavern. Yeah, so I don't know um, if you are following me on Instagram. I typically post the day before, both as a post and a story, what I'll be playing. 
Four meeples walk into a pub. Uh, how many walk out is the real question. Because if we're playing like, uh, what is it, like My Village or some of those games where you're going to have to kill some of your meeples as you play the game. Uh, so we got these crane cards. Uh, so some banners. Looks like choices of resources or just straight resources. Various colors and combos on that. Now of all the cards so far, I will say that this face of the card with these resources looks the blandest has the least amount of detail of any card yet. That castle wall probably could have had a little more detail thrown onto it. Maybe someone at the top of the wall leaning over as a castle watch or something. That it just feels off compared to the rest of the artwork I've seen so far in this game. Like, yeah, just compared to like the blue sky on the background of the one side doesn't even look like the same blue sky. Like it's, it's just flat blue up here, even though this shows like clouds and a variation in the color. So that that's the first, I'm not even sure I could say it's a complaint. Just the first thing I noticed that felt off. Okay. Now, now let's see why we're having a bad day here. Let's, Let's see what's going on here. Well, okay, well, first off, so it looks like they're in a cave. Just some torches and a small table on it, or a table in the middle of the cave, a little bit of water. So if he's living in a cave, it wouldn't be that fun. So some of these cards just show that cave. So there's a stack of those. And then now some of these have, looks like a resource which looks like probably the coin. Uh, one, two. So it looks like you could have a bad day if you drew one without a coin on it. <laughs> that may be why you have, that that pulls in a little bit of luck into that. Yeah, that one has so much detail. Yeah, that, that's why it surprised me. These didn't have as much detail. Uh, these workshop style looking ones are next. So that's a really cool kind of window in the background. Looks like they were working on some plans for something. And these are, so we got some King's Order, King's Favor. So it looks like actual like Paladins or something. Absolve, Attack. These almost look like action cards of some sort. Yeah, so the, that's a lot going on. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of parts and pieces to this, but if the iconography on those boards is as clear as it first seemed, once I take a look at the rules and watch a few videos, it could be a lot easier than seeing just maybe the strategy is what is the depth and not the learning curve. Um, yeah, so looking at BGG, the artist is... Ma Mahalo Dmitrievsky. I probably butchered that name. Uh, but from what I've heard other people say, nickname Milo. He, yeah, he's done most of these lines of games. And I believe he's also done the artwork on one of my favorite games that I don't get to play as often as I like to, but let me verify. Oh, he has like 185 credits for ARC. He has done a lot of art. Oh, but they're splitting like all the little tiny expansions, extra cards guys, for his. Yeah, really busy. Um, but supposedly for those who follow artists and designers in the gaming industry, he's really well known because he, he does a lot of this vibrant semi-realistic artwork where it's with a lot of detail in it so he's done stuff like coloma um what else like valeria stuff dice settlers
Yeah, as I start to actually teach and talk about more games, I need to get a lot better with names, because as soon, as soon as I'm room, I'm like, wait, who is that again? And it could be someone I know, and I'd be like, wait, that's who it is? So, like, yeah, he's done, like, the, like part of the series is, like, Explorers of the North Sea, uh, Fistful of Meeples, Horizons, kind of stuff all over the place. From, like, heavyweight to lightweight games, it looks like, so. So, yeah, like, yeah, one of the newer games that's shipping from Kickstarter soon is Merchant's Cove. Where is it? Where's the? I think. Why is it not on the list? One of my favorite games. I have to confirm. He's. It's on the list before I say the game. Yeah, there it is. Yep, Rise to Nobility, which is kind of a a dice as a work replacement game. Um. That quickly was one of my top games as soon as I got it, just because. A, the artwork style is like this, where it's it's very vibrant, semi-realistic, but set in a fantasy world, but drawn in a way that's so inviting to the table, which is nice, especially for the heavyweight games, that you need something to draw you in, to, especially for newer players or learning it. It's like, that. that's one thing about either old-style Euros or he super heavyweight games, I just don't have as much artwork or at least effort put into it I have a hard time focusing on like I am very visual first focused and then I get I stay for the mechanics which I know a lot of like heavy euro gamers are like okay just give me mechanics I don't care what it looks like it's like well I, I'd like a good looking game too why, why can't we have both <laughs> yeah so he's done a ton of great stuff probably more that I should be looking at and following. But yeah, so that was Paladins of the West Kingdom. Um, it, Like I said, it plays one to four players. Supposedly plays in 60 to 90 minutes. Hopefully I can learn it and teach it on stream uh, within that time limit because <laughs> long streams are hard to do for some people or, or, or watch. Um, did you have any questions about what I opened? Want to see any more of it? Or do you want to potentially look at any other games? I probably have 30 more minutes, so I have time to open another game tonight. But just let me know either way. If we don't have, if we don't want to tonight, I can save these for another stream, of course. Yeah, I, I definitely want to play now, which I think it's like that debate of since I don't have any specific plans this Sunday at all. Do I learn another new game? Or do I get out of the house and go do something while I can <laughs> that I don't have plans? It's one of those, oh, but I, I like gaming so much, new game. But leave the house. Get some sun. So, it may just have to wait and see what the weather is like. Oh, now I have to figure out how uh, how I packed this back up real fast. Okay, I poured all of these silhouette heads from this bag. Get out of the house and learn the game outside. Ooh, that sounds quite nice. Maybe I need to download a video or two, or hopefully a pot or maybe a podcast that talks about it. Go for a walk and listen to the rules. That would be like the best. Because I could do both at once. Yeah, but the weather, like, I'm just outside of DC and it's been quite nice weather. So Drunk Figure says, got Paladins but not played it yet. So yeah, I just opened it up. Um, right here so I've never played it so I've been talking about wanting to learn about it and especially with how great this artwork is we're uh, even tell wagon I was like yeah we want to play it right now um, 
And how are you today, Drunk Physics? I'm unsure how long you've been here or how you're doing, but yeah, currently my stream is uh, unboxing the week where I hang out with chat, kind of see how our week has been going, and then I open games on stream. So if there's like questions about the components, the quality, wanting to see more details, I try to show off that stuff right here on screen. Talk about like we talked about if the game comes with enough zip locks for the components, stuff like that. So we're actually just setting this, putting this one back in the box. Um, I will probably come back to it later and actually get some zip locks for all these pieces because it was a few zip locks short. 3D printing at the moment, just watching quietly. Well, thank you for watching. It's okay. I do appreciate everyone who shows up, even when you lurk, because every viewer matters. Uh, da, 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 da. So, yeah, I'm just going to throw these in. And I'm like, don't look. I'm going to do, like, the worst thing. Probably the worst thing to do. Loose components. <laughs> uh, top 10 games. Give me an idea of what kind of gamer I am. Oh, oh that, that that's a question that's hard to answer. Um, I'm, I consider myself an omni gamer. I play practically anything and everything, but it more depends on who you play with, not what you play. So, so some, some groups I play with enjoy constantly learning a new game are more than happy to go get into a deep game that could take two to three hours and then i have other friends who are kind of spacey all over the place and if you play anything that lasts more than 30 minutes they can't focus but i do enjoy the quick card games the occasional party game it depends on what they are um i have while I do occasionally enjoy like a social deduction game, I don't play them as often. So top 10 games probably that I will never say no to is probably how I will do a top 10 because it's constantly in flux and that I don't like saying, okay, this is my all time favorite game because I like each game for slightly different reasons. But my top 10, 10 games I will probably never say no to. I did talk about one earlier is um, I always draw a blank even though I just mentioned it. Well, while I think, rethink of the one, the name I just lost, uh, Goo Gong uh, is probably one of my top kind of worker placement style games that with the twist and that it uses the cards as workers and you're constantly planning for the next round. I do like a good tile laying game like Calico that is both relaxing and brain burning at the exact same time. So interaction or no interaction. I I like both. If there's not enough and it feels just like a solo game, then why am I playing it with someone? But I, on average, I don't want over the top interaction that is constantly take that. I can play a tech to that game, but everyone at the table needs to be prepared and understanding that to take that game and not be offended by it. Because too often you play with like one or two people that can that easily get offended and be, why are you attacking me or, or, or only preventing me? So I like that good balance of enough interaction so what you do has some effect on someone else, but what you're doing is not constantly, okay, you can't do anything in this game. I want everyone to be able to experience the game. Because I, I more play to have fun with who I'm playing with than the game itself. Uh, and then, uh, what's another good one? As you see, I keep looking back at my shelves because I, I constantly blank on the naming of games. Just because there's so many good ones to enjoy. Uh, what was that one I named earlier? Uh, blinking. Uh, so... So I mentioned Euros. I I more mentioned Euros in that um, as an understanding of what Euros are, but I don't think 
on average, I play as many Euros. Like, I will play a heavy game if it has good artwork. So, like, we were talking about earlier Paladins that we opened up. is like 3.57 out of 5 on BGG as far as the weight level. But because it has such great artwork, that is what would draw me to the table first. Not just, oh, that's a heavy, big game that I want to brain burn. I want I want something that is visually stimulating first before I play it. Um, so, yeah, the, probably yeah, one of my top uh, dice as a worker placement games is Rise to Nobility. Same art artist as Paladins, um, but it uses... So you actually have... S- you everyone has the same amount of dice you roll them but you can only place your dice so the pips on them adds up to a certain amount so if you're placing low die you get to place a lot more dice and do a lot more things place the high die do less things but different sections on the board are either ascending or descending in value for the next die that has to be placed so there's a good balance in that you have not necessarily a true advantage if you have more lows or more highs so and then of course with the artwork on it's visual so visually stimulating um like if i want to play a high player just got black angel i don't know as much about that game um i've heard the name of it i honestly don't know what it's about uh but feel free to tell me more about it um i'll probably look it up later learn more about it if it's something i that really interests me and is something my game group would play next level troys okay and honestly i've never played troys either like there's a lot of like well-known games i haven't played um i've been in the hob like really ingrained in the hobby maybe seven years or so but only started diving deeper into the well-known stuff the past couple years um like my first convention I went to was about two years ago, uh, 2018. And then did several conventions in 19. And then, of course, 2020, most people. So, yeah, I so I definitely need to try that because I do enjoy a good dice placement because I enjoy l- luck-based games where you can mitigate the luck. So instead of, like, making a decision, then roll the dice. Roll dice, then make a decision. Well, thank you for stopping by, Tail Wagon. Um, I do hope you have a wonderful evening, wonderful dinner, and a wonderful weekend. Hopefully, I see you when I stream next on Monday, and you can join me as I actually play a game as well. And hopefully sometime soon, I can actually show you how to play Paladins. Um, Yeah, so some of my other favorite games, top 10, I would say if I'm playing with a group, of more than four people that don't want to think too hard, but still kind of semi-abstract, I would go with like Mysterium and that it, it's more relaxed setting. You can, you can talk and do other things during it. And then I, I kind of like that thinking in different ways, abstract ways. Uh, what else? Of course I like Everdell and Wingspan, but, like that's kind of like oh who doesn't like those uh teo teo i actually just recently got that in a trade from someone so i'm needing to try it out but definitely the components is what attracted me to that like all the the heavy pieces heavy tiles so you don't like wingspan so what do you not like about it like to be honest i've only played it on the computer on the steam app so it does make it a lot easier to play um, cause yeah, I was almost intimidated by it first opening up just how many moving parts and rules you had to figure out to play the first time, but being a, a solo game, people play together. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. The interaction that is relatively low. I found that there are some cards and some actions that get a little bit more interaction, but for the most part, that is a very solo e game. Uh, yeah, the the tableau builder does not increase and and build as high as a lot of other games I've played. Like as far as essentially, a, a, it's a very 
condensed engine builder that you don't get going very fast or very far. So like I, I, I like it for the Steam app and how relaxing playing the solo Steam app can be. But playing the physical copy, I don't enjoy as much. But I can definitely see why people don't like it as much. But I can also see why people, so many people like it. Yeah, if someone takes your resources, yeah, it's there are some moves that's hard to mitigate, so I can see that. But I, I do like in a game where if there's interaction and they do something, there's not as much to do about it. Yeah, so like, because if you're playing a game where there's supposedly interaction, but then no matter what you do, it doesn't affect the other players or slow them down because they're like, oh, I can still get the same resource doing this. I'm like, okay, well, then what's the point of having that kind of play where you're stopping them? So some games do need a, a little rebalancing. Yeah, so the illusion of choice. Yeah, so it's... I do agree there are some games that almost force you to make certain decisions as you build an engine or or play through. It's like, okay, this is the only way to do it. So, yeah, I do like, if I'm going to have a choice, it needs to have an effect on either or someone else or what I'm doing. It can't just be like, oh, I did that. There was, it didn't make a difference. So I, I do agree with that. Um... But I have noticed like a lot of the new games are definitely leaning towards the artwork first, mechanics second. And so and so that's why a lot of the new popular ones are very art based and mechanics can seem not as favorable. Yeah, so Seven Wonders I've only played a few times and that was only like a three player game. So I don't know how different it would have been at higher player counts. Because, like, oh, I know so many cards are coming back to me with the draft style, and but I know I, it would have played a lot different knowing that less cards were coming, but then I had less agency on what's coming towards me, too. But, yeah, there's definitely a lot of new other games now that I found find just as if not more enjoyable. So what are some of the games you enjoy recently that you've been playing? Um, let's see what else. Uh, Western Legends, okay. Um, Nemesis. Yeah, I guess we we tend I guess we tend to play slightly different games. Again, you're you're finding stuff that I haven't played yet, but like I've definitely heard about them, just I have not played them yet. But then again, being gamers in the hobby and limited funds and how many games come out each year, we each have to be selective on what we buy and, and so that's come across as So I think those tend to be what, like medium, semi-heavyweight style games, leaning more towards the Euro style of gaming, it seems like, if I remember correctly on those games. But then again, like I said, I haven't played, so I can't be for sure. Let's see. Look some of those up here. Okay, so Spartacus. Okay. So only Anarcha is Euro. Okay. But do those tend to be more, I guess, lean towards the heavier weight side of things? Because some of the play groups I've been in recently, they tend towards the kind of like the easier, faster games. So I haven't played a lot of the longer ones as much recently, unless they have. Well, I've started looking for the ones that have good solo modes. So I'll probably look into these and see how they play. 
Western Legends. Yeah, like I, I know I've heard of Western Legends and seen the art, seen the art on it. Yeah, so that's just midway. That's not necessarily heavy. That might be something I could get them interested in. Oh, and it goes up to six players. That's good too. So action point, area movement, dice rolling. So yeah, I'd have to look at how that plays. I, I think the only thing that I see on Western Legends that might throw me is the betting and bluffing. That The betting and bluffing style games is what tends to hit our table the least. Just because like, we have so many people that can't focus the right way that betting like in the bluffing part no one has a poker face no one can do any of that it's just and so it just throws off the game because then everyone just kind of bets at a balance way not really much betting and bluffing okay i'll definitely have to look into how it's integrated and how that would play over with our game group because this being that it's two to six players that's something i can't just play solo on my own Yeah, definitely. I do I do like kind of the I'm seeing some miniatures, I'm seeing some interesting artwork, so definitely an interesting choice to look into. And let's see what else did you say? Nemesis. Okay, one to five okay, one to five players, so that's something I could look into playing alone. So adventure horror. So I, I do enjoy some of the horror games. So that's co op. We do good with co-op because it helps out. We don't really have many alpha gamers. We do pretty good at talking it out. Um, so how, how is Nemesis? Does it give you a lot of agency and so your choices actually have effect or in Blood Rage? Okay. Because um, like you talked about, you want you want the choices to actually mean something. So... I found that like in some, some especially co-op games, like choices are basically made for you. So as long as the choices actually have agency and are critical, and it's not just like okay, you always have to make this choice. That that would be a good option. So you have ways to escape from an alien ship. Okay. Oh, and it has hidden rules that. Being that it has hidden rules, but also being co-op, that could actually lead to a really good for our group, because we have we have one person who th who just says he he thinks differently than everyone else. Like we don't alpha game, but he can get frustrated if he sees that we're not making optimal moves, but he still won't say what those moves are because he wants everyone to enjoy it. So that, it's aliens the movie as a game, <laughs> nice. And more friendly. Okay, I'll definitely have to look into this one then. Because he had that that kind of the horror style theme stuff. It's definitely when done right is really enjoyable. It's a good suggestion. Bell Star Galactic. Um yeah I've I, I haven't watched or I don't know a huge amount about it. Like, to be honest, growing up, I wasn't super ingrained. I, I guess you could say nerd culture or however you want to place that into it. So I didn't watch as much of that stuff. So Vindication and Champions of Midgard, both definitely very good games. Enjoy both of the go those. Um, Champions of Midgard, I would put... Uh, probably top 20 games at least um i don't know if i've played it enough to say top 10 yet but i do like the the semi i i guess you can call it semi co-op and that everyone's trying to uh, deal with the board and the trolls and stuff like that and if no one deal, deals with it everyone gets some negative so i've only played it once with expansions and at this point it was a couple of years ago but yeah, we had like a big like five player game, added multiple expansions. I've re I did really enjoy it, uh, but I do feel I need to play it more 
and play those expansions more to really f get a better feel for how each one affected the game and and how much I like each aspect of it. Because when you add that many expansions, you're like, okay, I can focus on so many of them at once. My favorite work replacement... Um, ooh. It's a great question. Well, I, I not necessarily because it's the best game, but more for nostalgia and that it's what how I learned work replacement. Lords of Waterdeep is always going to be near the top of my list for work replacement. It's just it's how I learned the work replacement style, and I know other some other newer ones do it slightly better, but just. A, I've always enjoyed kind of the D and D stuff. It's just it's hard to not keep that on the shelf and say, yeah, I'll play it. Just the theming of it, how well it it did it for how old it is at this point. Yeah, exactly. Not necessarily my fave, but still love it. Uh, exactly how I think about that. Have your copy blinged out. Yeah, I've recently got a. Uh, one or two of the expansions on it, but I use like the Plano boxes to store all the expansions and split it up. And I think I got the, I can't remember what website, but a website had like mini meeples for all of the, I guess you could call it the worker cubes that you pick up. Oh, the metal coins. That would be nice. I only have like one or two games with metal coins. Um, Yeah, so I'll definitely have to look into the metal coins on that one because a few a few games that you know will never leave the shelf are are always nice to bling out. Yeah, the and real meeples. Yep, exactly. That I have the meeples instead of blocks. Um, but they're like the mini ones. So and so I don't know if that's what you have. Custom playmat. Who? That would be nice. So I only have a few, I guess you could say, playmats for games specifically. Like, I, I know I got one for... What did I get recently? Pi like, Legendary Adventure Pirates. That was a huge playmat. It was like, probably three and a half by like two and a half feet big. It was too big for one of the tables I was using at the time when I first got that game. I recently got Cartographer's Heroes playmat from the publisher because I was teaching how to play it. Um, yeah, the main playmats I get are more the plain ones, kind of like you see here. And these I actually bought on sale. So just the plain neoprene. So I bought like four colors of them just so I can switch the colors I play with. And then I recently, actually today, ordered some custom playmats with my logo on them. So then I can stream and see the logo right here. Give the cartographer's playmat as I backed it on Kickstarter. Nice. So did uh, you talking about heroes or just a regular cartographers? Yeah. So like with the streaming, like we've done some charity weekend streams, and I've streamed it. Okay, heroes. Yeah, I d didn't actually end up backing heroes, and I instantly regretted it. Just at the time, I was low on funds. Just a transition point where I had to st step away from doing Kickstarters. And so I, I, I've been at the f on the fence of like, do I go pre-order it right now? Or do I, I don't know, talk to the publisher since they sent me the map and be like, hey, if I keep showing off the game, can I get Heroes too? It's like one of those feelings of, do I order it and then risk them wanting to send me it to show it off as well? But yeah, definitely, I really enjoy Heroes. Um, played it this past weekend on stream teaching it and, and like they also had me give away some of the cartographers like the original base cartographers game they have now a digital uh app on ios and android for the game which they had me get, give away some keys for but yeah i, I play the digital version almost daily and when I first got it, it was multiple times a day just because of how much I was enjoying it and how fast the app allows you to play. 
but yeah um so yeah a lot of great games i'm definitely still learning a lot of games um so always open to suggestions game i want to play most on my shelf of shame <laughs> well my shelf of shame has too many to name in that I've lost track of how many I haven't played yet. I get bad at that. Um, to be honest, Paladins was near the top of my list to open. Um, so I definitely want to learn that one. I recently got a copy of Kingdom Rush Rift in Time. And so I want to get that to the table with my game group and try it out with them. Because we played Kingdom Rush was Elemental Uprising on stream a couple, couple months back. Just like the prototype copy. Yeah, it's the tower defense style game. So it, it's based off of the the digital game but they turned it into the physical game with some miniatures and tower cards and then the rules on how they advance and you can only and then it uses like basically tetraminos like shape kind of like tetris shaped pieces that each tower can do damage in a certain way and you're trying to basically place the tower and it can throw the, that shape onto the attacking cord but yeah i recently picked up a copy that someone was trading so i want to get that to the table with the group because it is co-op and everyone has their own towers if you don't use a tower you can pass it to another player and stuff like that so definitely want to try that just because the artwork and i know my game group would enjoy it together but yeah it's as far as shelf of shame it's it's i've got to a point where there's too many to name anymore just like i'm looking up and i'm seeing two dozen on a shelf to my left of things I need to unbox. But oh, So probably the, the one I, I've played it before, but only once at a convention. And I've, I'd wanted the game for years now and finally got a copy. So it's as soon as I open it, I'll probably play again, is uh, Brass Birmingham. It just... A, kind of the darker artwork and it was super crunchy and thinky and that immediately the first time I played which I did terrible the first time I played I immediately wanted to try again um, so I've been craving getting that so I need to get that to the table again and I picks up, picked up the Rox, Roxley clay uh, coins whatever they call them so like the really nice coins that you can use for brass so I'll probably try to play with that um, so yeah, what, what's some of your, I guess, what's on your shelf of shame that you really want to play and what you want to try, try to learn, which we've been yakking. I probably could have changed to this view right there. There we go. Uh, S H A S N. So Lords of Hella. Okay. Lords of Hella. Why do I feel like I know that one? Uh, Lord. Okay. So, that, okay, that one comes with a lot of great miniatures, area influence. Okay. Card drafting, that would be good. Yeah, that definitely looks like something interesting to try. King's Dilemma. Viscounts of the West Kingdom and Paladins. Yeah, so, like, a lot of this whole line of, like, the, the Paladins, Viscounts, uh, the, was it the Shipwrights and stuff, I hadn't actually played most of them. And so I actually picked up a couple and still need to open them to try them out. So it was a great reason to open this up and do an imperium i've heard fun things about that um yeah and since i actually opened paladins tonight i do 
happened to have an extra copy. So my plan was, which I didn't tell anyone when this game got picked to be opened, but I'm going to end up editing this video as an unboxing video to put it up on YouTube later. And I'll probably end up doing a giveaway for the unopened copy. So, if you want to look out for that video to post in the next week or two, if you want a chance to actually get a copy of the game as well. So then, you can learn it, like I'm going to be doing, and mark it off of, unless you already have the game, and then tell your friends, hey, get a free game. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm getting to a point where I'm, I'm going to need to stop the stream today, because I got playtesting in half an hour and I still got to do dinner but it's been great hanging out um I appreciate you being here in chat and hanging out talking to me about games it's what I love doing just being part of my, my favorite hobby just learning about games talking about games showing off games teaching them uh what do I play test so I actually help manage the weird draft games discord group which we do a Friday night playtesting event where basically anyone in the group there can bring a, if they have a game ready, like on Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia, they'll have it ready where we can playtest it. And on average, we have maybe eight to 10 people a week. We'll test up, on average, we we'll test four to five games every week. Sometimes ones we've already tested the next iteration or we'll play something brand new. But the nice thing is, feel free to try your game from Vector Wars. <laughs> and is that, uh, send me a whisper if you have like a link or something to it. Because uh, I unfortunately won't be able to post a link in chat. But I'm, I'm more than happy to look at games. Um, like I've started recently working with some publishers that reach out for reviews on games. So I've been getting some in. I'm doing more reviews. and I do regular playtesting. But always more than happy to look at games. Like I, I don't mind at whatever level of game it is. I need to post in chat. Okay. That should help. Yeah, send send the link and I'll I'll look at it, see what I can do. Um but yeah, I'm going to have to log off of here in a moment to go get to grab some dinner real quick before I go lead the playtesting event cuz that typically le uh, lasts like 2 to 3 hours. Most Friday nights I get to bed at like midnight or so because I'm East Coast and so yeah I, that's why I try to do the kind of the hangout chat on Friday so I don't have to stress about it um, but I also stream and help co-host um, the charity board gamer he does some different streams during the week Tuesday Thursdays and Saturdays he does some different streaming typically there'll be digital games on TTS or something We'll do interviews with designers. And so I, um, I'm a pri the primary co-host. I join most streams with him. And now I've started branching out doing some of my own streams. But yeah, I appreciate you being here in chat. Um, and I hope do hope you have a wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend. Uh, were you able to whisper let me know if you still have any issues or you can of course reach out to me at any of my other social media stuff i can be found at jbird the word on instagram twitter oh there's a whisper Well, now that you've started the whisper, that will be easier to continue whisper even when I'm off and not streaming. So I appreciate you watching tonight. Uh, thank you for joining. If you like it, 
feel free to leave a follow if you haven't already. I need to look through all the new followers. Um, but yeah, I've started recently streaming on my own, so I'm just doing it for fun right now because, hey, I like to play games and spread joy. That's kind of my motto. Um, so it, it's not about doing it just for the for the subs because a i can't get subs yet but i appreciate the followers because it helps notify you when i go live and so we can hang out and chat more but yes thank you for watching i'll be sure to check out that link um and here's to you as well thank you and as always play games and spread joy and good night